Filling the sky today with wings, the birds we know descended from the reptile family millions of years ago. They now divide into some 8,580 species, evolving over time characteristics suited to differences in the Earth's terrain. Despite man's repeated destruction, the marshlands of Bharatpur in Rajasthan survive as one of their sanctuaries, attracting the wader species, the glamour birds of the feathered world. Web-footed, they stalk fish and frogs, the small reptiles and large insects which inhabit the marshes. From far away Siberia come these lordly Siberian cranes after breaking journey at Kabul. Out of some 2,000 members existing today, one section spends the winter in China and the other at Bharatpur, where they camp with their young for five long months. Grooming their feathers is like keeping their flight mechanism in good trim. The waders, stilt-like legs, are counterbalanced with equally long necks. One helps them to wade through the water, the other to bend down for food. The flight back home is navigated by the sun and the stars and the experience of centuries. Birds are aided by their sweeping vision, both telescopic and monocular, the most developed of any living species. The call of the Saras crane. Indigenous to India and as tall as a man, the graceful Saras builds its nest of reeds and rushes in the middle of the marsh on a dry spot. It guards its young jealously, attacking all intruders. The Saras is said to pair for life, and if one dies, the mate remains close by, uttering melancholy cries, eventually dying of grief. This marital devotion is legendary in folklore and has made it the most protected of birds. During the breeding season, the pair frolic and dance in a spectacular courtship. Congregations of the painted stalk or jangheel nesting.
Birds can sleep on branches without falling. They have a built-in locking device in their feet. Hunched up, waiting for a catch, agitating the water, casting a shadow, all to speed the prey into the half-open bill. Taking off. Birds fly so well because of their feathers. Light but structurally strong. They conserve heat, supply propulsion and are renewed yearly. The adjutant stalk or garul has a sadly grotesque low-hanging pouch or sack which is its distinctive mark. It gets its name from its very military walk. The black-necked stork is a loner, here fishing with skill by itself. As you can see, the bird's beak is an all-purpose tool, a hand to catch a snake, hold it, to kill or defend, to weave a nest or to dress feathers. Yet another migratory visitor to the Bharatpur marshes is the grey lag goose. An ancestor of the common domestic goose, it breeds from Lapland to Spain, from Scotland to China. Once winter sets in there, it comes in large gaggles to the more temperate zones. The mainly vegetarian pintail, like most short-necked birds, gets its food by tipping in the water. The upper end, or vertical stance, makes it look like acrobatic tumbling. Like the pintail, the spotbill also seems to know that it is prized at man's dinner table. Both are exceptionally swift at disappearing after gunshot. The old world spoon bill, aloof by temperament, nesting. The aigrette is a strong flyer, holding its legs stiffly out behind for balance, but keeping its neck in the shape of an S. Its wings are so large that it need flap them only twice a second while flying. It was wildly hunted by man once, when its feathers were the height of fashion. The cattle aigret loves eating insects off the backs of cattle, even those stirred up by its feet.
the white ibis or munda, much revered in Egyptian mythology, probes the soft mud for food with half-open bill. The heron family of the grey, the purple, and the pond heron. The data, or snake bird, is so called because it keeps its extra long neck folded underwater, ready to dart out and spear a fish. Its unique neck structure is certainly a reminder of reptile ancestry. The data half digests its food, then takes it out to feed its young. Its wings are not waterproofed and must be hung out to dry. The little dab chick or dubdubi is one of the swiftest divers and spends much time half swimming and half pattering over the water and munching frogs. The crazy coot also loves the water and would rather make a fast getaway by skittering over the surface than fly which it finds laborious. Once up in the air it picks up speed soon enough. The cormorant, a common sight on the marshes. The pheasant-tailed jacana has widely spreading toes which enable it to distribute its weight and skip lightly on lotus and lily leaves. Its other name is the lily trotter. It is unique in that the female produces up to ten eggs in the nests of different males. Though dramatic in colouring, the purple moorhen is a shy and clumsy bird, but very noisy during the breeding season. The male holds water weeds in his bill and bows to the female with loud chuckles. It is not a fast swimmer and likes the protection of weeds and rushes. The small blue kingfisher from a family of expert fishermen. The pied kingfisher hovers stationary above the water and then swoops swiftly onto its prey. The brown headed stalk billed kingfisher does the same from a perch. The white breasted kingfisher. All kingfishers nest in holes by water banks. On to the desert, where, when the rains fall, birds flock to the water in their thousands. 
Native to the desert, the sand grouse is as powerful and swift as the pigeon and the dove to whom it is related. It carries water within its feathers for its young. A plover wrapped in reflection. The great Indian bustard, the rarest of all the bustards, now a vanishing species. The golden oriole, found from Europe to Asia, it eats off trees and relishes hairy caterpillars. The small green bee eater. The golden backed woodpecker, knocking away with its specially evolved beak. The dove. And the peacock, India's national bird, revered in myth as goddess Saraswati's vehicle. And now to the birds of prey, the king vulture and the white-backed vulture with their hooded beaks and powerful talons for feeding on carrion. The pale harrier. The tawny eagle is the most abundant of the eagles, capable of soaring to heights of 20,000 feet and plunging in bursts of speed. It has been sighted along the flanks of Mount Everest. And king of them all, the magnificent crested serpent eagle. The Indian great horned owl wakes as night falls. Its big round eyes, placed like a man's, mainly binocular with the transparent third eyelid, search for prey, while the rest of the feathered world sleeps. 